Hey there, welcome to Nippy Invest. Today I'm going to look at a company called Baby Bunting. This is not a company I've really looked at in the past, but they did release their half yearly results on February the 12th. And I do know quite a few people, uh, maybe not in love with this company, but they are fairly high. So I'm going to have a look at this company, look at their half yearly results, and look at their valuation. So the agenda for this video is to focus on the half year results uh, for baby bunting, in particular looking at the revenue, operating cash flow, and profit after tax. Also have a closer look at the financial statements uh, and then look at the online sales and gross margin growth. And that is uh, taking a look at the presentation they released with the financial results, because I do like to see what retail companies are doing in their online sales and always have interest in gross margins for any business. And then I'm gonna have a look at the financial history of the company. So looking at their revenue, operating cash flow and profit growth over the last uh, five years since they IPO'd in 2015. And finally, I'll just look at the compound half yearly growth rate of revenue, operating cash flow and profits and also examine the valuation um, in regards to the historical valuation compared to present time. So these are the financial numbers for baby bunting, just the revenue, operating cash flow, and profit after tax. These are the three main things I really look at, particularly the revenue and operating cash flow. So revenue up 16.6% uh, .6 to $217 million. And when I say up, I'm referring to year on year. And profit is up to $7.5 million. That's increasing 55% year on year. The one interesting thing when I got to baby bunting was the operating cash flow for the half year was negative two million. And that is something I don't like to see. I prefer a company to be operating cash flow. So that is something I really had to delve into a little bit deeper to have a look why this company is operational cash flow negative. So next thing I'm gonna look at is take it just a really closer look at the financial statements. And first of all, I'll just look at the profit and loss. And when I'm looking at the profit and loss statement, I'm trying to see if there's any abnormal items. And what do I mean by abnormal items? So what I'm doing is looking at numbers that exist this year that didn't exist last year or vice versa. And with baby bunting, we do see two abnormal items this year. So we can see other income, which was 2.4 million, and other expenses, which is negative 1.1 million. To take a closer look at what those two items were, you can have a look at the notes they provided in the report, and the positive 2.4 million was in re regards to a, a re reception of a cash settlement payment, and the negative 1.1 million was, they did find some insects in a packaging of goods in an imported shipping container. And to fix that problem, they did have to spend $1.1 million. And there's also some short-term increases to supply chain costs. So all up, even though the increase in profit from the previous year was quite impressive at positive 55%, when you take these two abnormals into account, that increase in profit wasn't quite as impressive as the company was letting on. So next, I'm just gonna have a closer look at the balance sheet of the company, and there's two things that really stick out when I look at this financial statement. The first thing is the increase in inventories from 65 million to 92.8 million. That's an increase of 27 million. And to fund that increase in inventory, they've increased their borrowings by 29 million. So straight away, I know most likely the main reason they are operating cash flow negative for the half was this increase in inventory and why have they increased inventory? That is the question. And more than likely, without going into finding any reason, uh, they're just anticipating growing demand for their products. And finally, I just want to have a look at the cash flow statement. This is my favorite statement in the financial report because if nothing else, this is the one thing I really want to look at because you can get a good gauge of how a company is performing forming, but not always. And this is a good example. If you look just at the cash flow state for baby butting and see, saw that they were operational cash flow negative by $2 million, you might get the wrong indication. And we just saw from the balance sheet that they did have some inventory expansion, and that's more than likely the main reason they are operational cash flow negative. And we have also seen that increase in borrowings down there by $29 million. Now, I do highly recommend uh, looking at a company's presentation in regards to the half year or full year report. You do get quite a bit extra information you might not find 
in the financial reports. So in their cash flow uh, presentation slide, they do mention a change in working capital reflects short-term increase in inventory and three new stores. You can see that this isn't representing the cash flow statement. You can see the operating cash flow from trade was actually 26 million and that movement in working capital was negative 22.7 million. And that's the main reason that change or movement in working capital particularly in regards to increasing inventory was the reason that operational cash flow negative. Now also from the presentation, you can find a nice little slide on their online sales growth. I'd like to see how a retail company is dealing with this uh, surge towards online, town, online sales. Uh, and I think any sort of retail company that isn't heading in this direction is uh, going to find a very slow death in their future. So Baby Bunting is growing their online presence quite well. Uh, in fact, they've grown it from 5.8% of total sales in uh, first half of financial year 17, all the way up to almost 20% this financial year. So they're on the right track. And secondly, uh, to do with their gross margins, I do like to have a close look at gross margins, particularly any sort of trend. And with Baby Buttings, we do see an increasing trend from 33% in financial year 18 to 37.4% uh, this year. So gross margins is fairly important for gross profit because if you can reduce the cost of goods sold, without changing the seller price, that would increase the margins. That's a good sign that you're becoming more profitable and increasing operating cash flow, that sort of thing. So that's something I really look for in any company, not only retail companies. So the next thing I like to look at is sort of some sort of trend, uh, particularly a positive trend in the financial metrics of a company, in particular operational cash flow, revenue and even profit after tax and then I also always like to compare that to the market cap growth so is a company growing quicker or quicker than their financial metrics or is it the opposite and you can really tell whether a company is becoming overvalued when you compare the growth of their market cap to their financial metrics so how is it going for baby bunting so in this slide here I am comparing the four. So revenue and market cap are just the lines. And you can see market cap, which is the sort of the orange line, uh, was sort of uh, sort of going flat up until 2018 and then has grown very strongly since then from about 180 million all the way to above 600 million. And revenue and operational cash flow have been growing strongly. But you can see operational cash flow has been quite lumpy. In fact, the final half of the previous financial year 2020 we did see 41 million dollars of operational cash flow in the most previous half year as we've just seen that were negative two million so that's quite lumpy and i always like to sort of try to smooth out those lumps we've also seen a good steady increase in revenue that's also positive but the question i have when i look at this is how does this increase in market cap compare to the increase in uh, revenue and operational cash flow so now I'm just going to compare the growth rates, the compound half-year growth rates of the market cap, compare that to the growth rates of revenue, profit, and operational cash flow. And the main thing I'm looking for here is any discrepancy between the growth rate of market cap to the other three financial metrics. I don't want to see the growth rate of market cap be significantly higher than the other three because that is showing you that the market is tending to overvalue a company. And... Overall, that's not a good thing moving forward. So typically you want to see market cap growth rates to be roughly the same as the other three. Now, when you do compare the market cap growth rates, very similar to the revenue growth rate, it's a little bit less than profit growth rate because you could argue right now that baby bunting has become more undervalued than it was when it IPO. But look at the operational cash flow a negative 2.6% per year. Now, that's a little bit unfair on baby bunting because I'm comparing one half that they were negative $2 million to a positive half. So I'm going to make a slight adjustment to that number in the next slide. So in this slide, what I'm doing is just showing the operational cash flow on baby bunting in half year increments. You can definitely see how lumpy it is for this company. We did get to a high of 40.3 million in the second half of financial year 2020, and the low in operational cash flow has been the most recent quarter or recent half, which was negative 2 million. Now, that just means 
that the compound half-year growth rate of cash flow is highly dependent on which two halves you're comparing. So for example, if you're comparing the most recent half to the first half of 2016, you do get a growth rate of negative 2.6. But if you go back one half and compare the second half of 2020 to the second half of 2016, you get a growth rate of 21%. And there's a big difference between those two numbers. So what does all that mean? Well, if you insert the operational cash flow growth of 20.6 and compare that to the market cap growth, you do see some sort of sign that maybe baby bunting is not as valued as a much as it was when it IPO'd. So market cap growth rate is only 7.7% per half year, while operational cash flow with you know some asterisks is growing at 20.6 per half year. And even when it compared it to profit and revenue, market cap growth rate is quite favorable at this point in time. And lastly, I just want to show you the baby butting chart over the past year or so, and we definitely see a nice uptrend in the share price over that period of time. Share price has gone from just less than $3 to right now just above $5. The really interesting thing here is how well the share price has bounced off the 100-day exponential moving average on one, two, three, four occasions in the past. And right now, the share price is heading towards that moving average. So maybe this is a potential buy into baby bunting just based off the fact that it is right on the 100 day exponential moving average. So what are my opinions on baby bunting since this is the first time I've taken a, a close look, if you can call it that, uh, of the company. So the first two things I'll take away from this is uh, baby bunting is not overvalued when you look at their historical growth rates. So if you compare their financial numbers now to when they IPO'd, you could say that this company is not overvalued. You might say it's actually potentially undervalued. And the main reason you could say that is because the market cap or the operational cash flow and revenue have been growing faster than the market cap. And the other thing I'll take away from this is if you look at the chart, there is a nice uptrend over the past year. And right now, the share price is at technical support. So if you do like this company, now could be the good time to buy in because the share price has dipped back from $6 to $5. It's at the 100-day moving average. And that has tended to be a really good support level for baby bunting over the past year. So that's all I've got on this video of baby bunting. If you have any comments, leave it in the comments section. Otherwise, I'm not a financial advisor. So if you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs.